video we're going to be looking at how to create an isolated water plane a plane that you may use in a, a pond within a scene uh, but you want to take advantage of uh, displacement and uh, making interesting effects in terms of uh, water depth etc so you see on the screen I've already loaded a two-dimensional plane it's just a standard view primitive but I have made it 10 meters square instead of the default 4.5 meters square obviously the first place to start is to load a material I'm going to go with the physical seawater it's completely covered with uh, foam because it's detecting a surface below so we need to edit the material anyway so in the foam what I'm going to do is I'm just going to reduce its effect in the scene in fact I'll drop it right down just to make life easy okay so that's gone let's go back to the water material itself and look at water it has a default bumpiness which we're going to edit in a moment but the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to look at this icon here the visibility icon because at the moment we're seeing the transparency which is making it difficult to see what's going on I'm just going to click here once and then I'm going to click here again just so I get a nice flat grey without having to constantly re-edit the, the, the water plane because we can go back and just switch the transparency etc on again so I can see grey you'll see that it comes in with bump but we also want to take advantage of the displacement mapping and you can see the surface has already changed we're going to edit this as we go and I'm going to reduce the scale because this water material is meant to be put over an infinite plane so I'm just going to reduce it to one to see what the effect is and we can see already from a quick preview render that the, the plane has already displaced and bumped as it were and if we increase that a little bit more let's make it nine we'll double the displacement so we can see the effect even further and we can see here that that has displaced further and I'm going to make it a little bit extreme just to explain uh, one thing that's going to happen so let's do a quick preview render it's not a preview render it's final quality you can see here we're getting some nasty little polygons and details in here that we don't want so let's increase the quality boost and I'll just change this back to a preview render so it's quicker it's still showing the polygons so I'm just going to test it in final quality just to see if it still comes through on final quality there we go final quality and everything is as it should be now obviously at this time we're looking at uh, an ocean type environment um, if I increase the scale again so we can just see what effect that has uh, you can see that it's a lot less troubled shall we say it's a lot less stormy on this particular plane now that for me would be a good starting place for a, a, a pond surface assuming that the wind is agitating the surface we want to see some ripples just remember we do have the facility to edit that function a little bit more and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to drop in another function very quickly I'm going to right click I'm going to add some noise and I'm going to use purlins and just top one on the list the value so the first thing I'm going to do is just connect this, this up so that we can see a difference between the two. Hey, hey, everything's gone haywire. Let's just see if we can get that tab back. I'm going to have to cut that out, aren't I? Okay. Okay, so we've added the blender and we'll connect it through to waves and to the purlins and we'll also add displacement to the blender okay the only reason I've done this is so we can interchange between the two so at the moment um, it was at 50% each but you can see the effect of putting the purlin in there 
We'll carry on editing for the time being because I want this to make eventually to look like ripples. So you can see the surface. Let's go back and we'll just reduce that bumpiness down to five. Or should I say displacement? And we might reduce that down a little bit further to two. There we go. That's a lot better. So if we just do a quick render, you can see now that we have a, a ripply surface, which is much more akin to a small pool um, or pond. I've just reduced that to displacement down a wee bit further so we can see the effect it has. So we have a pond surface or we have the sea. It's entirely up to you. As I always say, the user is, is in charge. Um, it's just nice to know that we can change these functions to achieve the end result that we're looking for, be it the open ocean or, remember I reduced the bump there, or through to the purlin, which will give us ripples. So we have the ripples, uh, but let's just have a look at what that means for our water plane, bearing in mind it's 10 meters. At 10 meters square, these ripples become small waves. So I'd be inclined to drop down the scale of the of the uh, ripples themselves. Just check that it's on preview before I send it to render. That's fine. It's a much better scale. So all I'm going to do now is go back to the material, put it back to transparent, and I'm going to change the, the depth of, of uh, penetration of the light to about four meters, just so we can see what we've got. And again, we'll do a quick render. And you can see the effect we've got. Obviously, the larger the water surface, um, the, the stronger the wind, etc., etc., uh, will determine how uh, ripply or wavy your surface is, whether you interchange between the fast purling or what other node you've decided to, to inject or whether you want to go back to the ocean. It's entirely up to you. Um, but I hope you found this useful. Don't forget to check us out on social media and check YouTube for uh, new videos from, from Eon Tips and Tricks. Thank you. Bye-bye.